everyone and welcome to another Minecraft update video. This is Snapshot 24W19A and for the second week running this one arrives on a Friday. I don't think that is going to be a regular thing though and this one includes some performance improvements with a chunk loading. It sounds like there were some inefficient processes with loading the chunks and so now the new system they've implemented will use less memory and CPU. I obviously don't know how much of a difference that makes, but fingers crossed it's a good enough one for all y'all who need it. So the first thing we're going to cover today are the mace changes, but as explained here, this was actually in last week's snapshot, they just forgot to put it in the change log. So the mace's item durability has been raised from a former 250 up to 500. The base damage of the mace has been reduced from 6 to 5. And as there are quite a few changes in this area, I'll point out that the 6 is the equivalent of 3 hearts. So 5 would be 2.5. The mace's attack speed has also been lowered. You'll notice when I select it, it takes a while for the mace to raise all the way up. And that means it's ready for use. So it used to be 2.4 and now it's 3.5. The damage of the density enchantment has been reduced drastically too. So for each block the player would fall, the damage used to go up by 3 per density level. However, this has been reduced to 0.5. And in the change log, it didn't specify hearts over damage. So I believe 0.5 would be a quarter of a heart, whereas it used to do 1.5 hearts. The smash attack damage that is gained from falling and striking the entity before you hit the ground has been changed too. This used to be a consistent three damage points for every block that you fall. But the way it works now is the first three blocks will give four damage points. The next five will do half at two damage points. And then any block after that that you fall will do one damage per block. So falling 10 blocks used to do 30 damage. Now it's down to 24. And if you fell 20 blocks, it used to be 60, but now it's 34. And for our third example, if you fell 50 blocks, you do 150 points of damage, whereas now it's 64. So these changes might make some of you say the mace has been nerfed, but I do think it was a little on the overpowered side. And I think this rebalancing is pretty decent in my opinion. Although it's one thing to look at the notes in the change logs and another thing entirely to play it all through in survival. There are a couple of other changes to mention too. The smash attack, which knocks back entities around the one you strike, wasn't affecting players previously, so now it will affect your fellow friends on a server. The density enchantment, which increases attack damage based on how far you fall, and the breach enchantment, which will reduce the effectiveness of armor on the target, these have been made incompatible with one another. So much like Bane of Arthropods and Smite, you can't have both of these on the mace together anymore. New sounds were added in this update too, so for the next 33 seconds, we're going to listen to the four new cave ambient sounds. Wow, those sounds are rather terrifying, and I can't help but think there's a certain location, a certain biome that these ones might play in. However, we weren't provided on any notes or context as to when and where they will appear. And you probably noticed it in the change log, the copper bulbs on and off sounds have been replaced with a single toggle sound. And now for some general changes in this snapshot. I have a frost walker on my boots. We have some water over here and the skulk sensor has had its abilities increased by including blocks that are frozen by a frost walker on signal strength 13. So if I drop down to the ground and walk over to this, you'll see the skulk sensor picks up the changing of these blocks. That's only when they are created though. If I break them and see it doesn't detect that. Is a change to something I wasn't aware didn't work, but falling block entities couldn't go through a nether portal previously. So now to do that, and it appears to kind of like maintain its trajectory. So that one was scooping downwards. If we go through the portal like this, you can see it now landed on the side of the nether. So over here, I've got a command block to summon one of these with like an upwards trajectory. The problem is it didn't actually go into the portal. 
So if we go ahead and modify that command, well, <laughs> I need to modify it again by the looks of it. This one should do exactly what we want. Yeah, there we go. And well, clearly, you know, it went in the right direction, but it fell off the edge here. So now we should be able to see what I was hoping to demonstrate. Yeah, but it kind of preserves its momentum and trajectory. That might be useful for something, but right now, nothing comes to mind. So a familiar sight for many of you Minecrafters out there. You've gone and set up a fence pen and you've been breeding up tons and tons of cows. Then you come back at some point in the future and you find some cows wandering around outside your little fenced off area. This is because when you have a lot of them inside of these fence posts, they push the baby cows into the corners. And when they grow into adults, the hitboxes are inside that of the fence post so they can come out the other side. This can also happen when you've got carpets on top of the fence posts too. And as of this snapshot, I'm pleased to say this issue should be fixed. It's plagued the game for like a really long time and hopefully this time they have actually fixed it. So there's an issue I've encountered this season of Hermitcraft when it comes to getting honey bottles out of this thing. When you have a configuration like this, the honey bottle would get ejected, which is rather annoying. That's not the way it should work. So in this one, it's been fixed. You can see... Uh, that it makes its way into the dispenser. This is because it would have previously have seen this as being completely full and then just ejected the bottle. And last of the bug fixes I'm going to cover in this one, brewing stands, their brewing cycle could get reset when chunks unload and load. Maybe something you've encountered. I've never had that been much of an issue for me before though. The rest of the bugs though are mostly related to stuff from recent snapshots, mainly enchanting. A lot of issues are cropped up because of this. For example, fire aspect on a weapon could actually change the state of a redstone lamp, a torch, a furnace, a blast furnace. This has now been corrected to only work on campfires, a cake with a candle, and candles. If you remember last week's video, we looked into this and I was slightly miffed as to why this wasn't working. It's because you need to be in survival mode because of course a sword will stop you interacting with blocks in creative. Now that was introduced to stop you from accidentally breaking those blocks. Just two more things to mention now. There's been a snapshot B released and that's because a villager dying could crash the game. And once again, there have been some tweaks to the new trial chamber textures, but these are very subtle, but I thought I'd mention it. And for the technical features in this snapshot, once again, it's a lot of under the hood stuff for the data pack creators and whatnot. I don't think many of these changes translate to survival Minecraft. So if you need to know, the article is linked down below. So with that, my friends, we have come to the end of this snapshot video. If you've enjoyed it, leave a like. Make sure you subscribe to catch next week's snapshot. And I will see you soon with another video. Bye-bye.